I believe the podcast by Dill will provide business owners, especially franchisees, great leadership guidance. Dill Driscoll, entrepreneur in residence at the University of Georgia, begins his speech by quoting Ferdinand Magellan, a famous explorer of the 1520s. sea is dangerous and its storms terrible, but these obstacles have never been sufficient reason to remain ashore. Unlike timid souls, intrepid spirits seek victory over those things that seem impossible. It is with an iron will that they embark on the most daring of all adventures to meet the shadowy future without fear and conquer the unknown. I enjoyed the Your Pie interviews with Drew French and Eric Zimmerman because you're able to see both fr the franchisee and franchisor's perspectives. It also gives insight into what kinds of questions a potential franchisee should ask their franchisor. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. Give us a quick overview of what your business is and what sets you apart from your competitors. Our business is called Your Pie. We're a uh, personal brick oven pizza company that uh, well, we started in 2008. Uh, what sets us apart is the fact that we're all personal pizzas. Uh, so every group of four can come in, everybody gets exactly what they want. So we based our whole company around is that individuality. As of now, what's the best advice you could give to someone who would like to franchise an existing business or someone who wants to become a franchisee in general? Uh, if you're going to franchise your existing business, make sure you have your systems very well documented. Uh, make sure it's something that you can just give a piece of paper over to somebody and they can recreate it. Uh, if, you, if your systems aren't in place, uh, you can't expect other people to, to follow those same systems and standards. You just make sure whoever you're getting into business with you know and trust. And, yeah, I mean, because an FDD, the initial franchise agreement, is 160 pages long, <laughs> and you know there can be things in there that you may not know about initially, and it could be kind of hidden or confusing. And how do you recommend raising capital to franchise? You got to get lucky and already have some some money, or uh, you've got to have people believe in your business plan and give up equity. Uh, if you're trying to get buy into a franchise, it, it makes it a lot easier if they're an established brand with getting loans. Uh, they can help you uh, secure those loans, and some franchisors even back the loans. What's the estimated cost to open one of these restaurants? I ended up loaning about 150, and then had to put about 30 on credit cards, and uh, would have rather started with about 250, and that's probably on the low end. Honestly, if you're gonna, because I know the Charleston one's about 400. So I, if I were to do it again, I'd probably want at least 250 to 300. What's your vision for your pie? From a distribution standpoint, it makes sense to stay in a a southeast region, but um, I see it's growing out of that in the next three or four years, going more national. What has been the one best thing about starting the business? I guess just the, the freedom of it. Uh, no one telling you what to do, which can be dangerous at times, but as long as you keep yourself motivated, it's, it's just nice knowing that the only person you got to answer to is yourself. And if you, know, you got the right mindset, that should be enough. And it's, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, anytime you know you need off, you, you don't got to ask anybody, you just kind of schedule it where you don't have to be there. And yeah, I'd say the freedom. Our interview with an entrepreneur is a valuable resource because it provides real-life examples of the advantages and disadvantages of franchising. Pac-Mail gave us the procedures for dealing with that. Um, I'm not so sure that we could have come up with those procedures on our own. We probably could have over time, working through trial and error, but I can't imagine how many customers we would have lost in the process. They provide um, negotiating power with our with our suppliers with FedEx, UPS, DHL. We as a company, we as a franchise are able to band together with the other franchisers and negotiate national contracts which give us lower rates and thus allow us to 
have both a higher profit margin and sell our products at a more affordable uh, price. I like the fact that even though that I'm independent, even though I'm making all the decisions, and even though I'm the last line of authority, when the proverbial crap hits the fan, I've got someone I can turn to. I've got people I can call for advice, sometimes help. You can't do that in an uh, independent business. You're the last line of authority. Um, the first times were hard. Um, we needed guidance at that point. We also needed guidance in how to run our day-to-day -day operations, how to deal with customers, how to set up the store, and so forth. Now that I've seen what works with my customers, who are different than other PacMail customers, and now that I've been able to handle a lot of these difficult packages, in a lot of ways I've outgrown that guidance. We don't need PacMail to tell us how to sell effectively to our customers. We don't need PacMail to know how to merchandise to our customers. There's no one who knows my customers better than I do. So any involvement that they have in those matters now is really little more than meddling. Um, I have mixed feelings about like, the royalties. In a lot of ways, they're like taxes. Um, we do get something from the royalty fees. Um, our royalty fees are divided between pure royalties and an advertising fund. The advertising fund theoretically is used to do national advertising. Some of it comes back to us in the form of um, advertising reimbursements when we do advertising on the local level. Overall, I say I'd, have to, I'd rather be a franchise owner in this business paying the royalties than an independent without the royalties. I enjoy the independence. I've come to realize about myself that I'm not someone who can work for someone else. Um, I can barely work for myself, so independent businesses are or an independent business is, is frankly where I've got to go to survive. If I want to engage in commerce, if I want to eat, if I want to feed myself, I've got to be in business for myself because I'm not going to go work for someone else nine to five for a paycheck. It's simply not going to happen. The best resource that I found was in Athens, Georgia with the Terry Entrepreneur Program at UGA. Not only are they the number one program for launching new businesses, they also offer other exciting programs, resources, and events for both students and business owners. Well, it's, I think it's helped my business because it helps me first as a, as a person because um, you know, owning a business is uh, so intertwined with who you are that uh, you have to grow as a person and as you grow as a person you learn how to run a business. And so being part of a group like this where there's other business owners that are kind of feeling the same struggles and the same uh, challenges that, that you are, it really helps you grow. This group here at the Terry College has been fantastic and uh, really what I want to stress is, uh, is uh, relationships with business people in the community. That's how I actually ended up with this company. It's how I became acquainted with this group. And everything I do up in the community in Virginia is actually based off, uh, based off those interpersonal relationships. It's helped a lot. Being able to come together with a group and talk about, you know, I'm in a completely different business than you, but we're still having some of the same challenges is, uh, is a lot of fun. Of course, getting to know people in town who's taken that step to start a business here in Athens and go from there. It's helped me because it's good to talk to other business owners and see what that they're having the same successes and or struggles as I am. And we've got good speakers that come in and really give us some, some good insight. So it's been really good. Okay, so we got some really good information from that, those interviews at the Terry Entrepreneurship Society. What do y'all think? Awesome. I, I feel like we need something else. I agree with her. We do need something else. Yeah, I think we need to find the element that's provocative and compelling for the remainder of our project. Yeah. What is that? Do you see that? Up in the sky? Is it a bird? I think it might be a plane. No, it's...